Right now, a Janesville veteran's family is asking the community to do more to help the homeless as they grieve his death. And new details about a school threat in a Milwaukee suburb after investigators caught a student with a hit list and a loaded magazine. Plus, Madison fire crews are upset the city council decided not to fund a ninth ambulance. How officials say it'll impact response times. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now at 6. First tonight, you might want to take it slow on the roads as more snow falls. We have team coverage. Meteorologist Dave Caulfield is live on the Beltline heading eastbound monitoring road conditions. And Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti tells us how much accumulating snow we can expect. Well, right now it's snowing on the uh, backyard patio. We have just a coating here, but surprisingly it's pretty slick just because the temperatures are pretty cold. They're mainly in the lower to middle 20s. Looks like a band of heavier snow is trying to develop to our south and east near the Illinois state line toward Milwaukee, but there are additional bands of snow farther out toward the west. If we look at visibilities here in Madison, visibility is down to nine miles. So the snow not falling terribly hard. They're just light, small flakes, but again, with the pavement temperatures being low, the uh, snow is sticking to the ground and uh, as the traffic kind of uh, mushes it up, it becomes slippery. Temperatures right now are about as warm as they've been all day. Uh, here in Madison, 23 degrees. Janesville's at 27. Most areas are in the low to mid 20s with wind chills in the teens. The snow will probably come to an end by around midnight and then skies will turn partly sunny for tomorrow. We could start to melt some of the snow, at least where areas they have uh, salt on the pavement as tomorrow's high temperature reaches 31 degrees. Now it's times like this where it's helpful to have an extra set of eyes on the road. We have meteorologist Dave Caulfield live on the west side of Madison on the Beltline. Dave? Well, thanks, Gary. We just turned off of the Beltline. We are now uh, heading closer to Verona on Verona Road, and we were just on Gammon Road over the last five minutes or so, and we are starting to see that snow accumulate on the roadways and make things a little bit slick. As you and I have been mentioning, the snow isn't particularly heavy by any means, but it's just enough to get on those roadways and make things slick, especially with pavement temperatures so cold over the last couple of days. All it takes is just a little bit of moisture and then you start to get some slick conditions. We weren't sliding necessarily, but we could definitely see uh, some accumulation starting to form on the roadway there. Uh, another thing to keep in mind, the Beltline looking good right now, but again, Changing conditions are going to be noticed over the next couple of hours as the snow goes up and down in intensity. Speaking of intensity, especially near Rock County, closer to the state line, it's started to snow a little bit heavier over the last 20 minutes or so. So it may not be snowing all that heavy in Madison, but as you head southward closer to Janesville, maybe on the way home, keep that in mind that conditions could change rapidly. We'll send it back to you in the studio. New video now of a Waukesha bus driver rescuing two small children wandering out in the snow. The little girl had only a t-shirt and diaper on. It was 18 degrees outside. Driver Nicole Chamberlain put the children on the bus, cranked the heat, and gave them her coat. Police reunited the children with their grandmother who explained while she was in the basement. The six-year-old boy went outside and the little girl followed. Quick reminder, alternate side parking starts Friday in Madison. If you're going to be parked on the street between 1 a.m. and 7 a.m., your vehicle needs to be on the odd side of the street. If the date is an odd number, even side of the street if the date is an even number. Alternate side parking rules are in effect through mid-March. For anyone who lives in the snow emergency zone, that includes the Isthmus, and a handful of other neighborhoods, you only need to follow alternate side parking when there is a declared snow emergency. The fine for forgetting can range from $20 to $60. You can sign up to receive parking reminders via text or email through the city's website, cityofmadison.com slash winter. And a reminder to download our First Alert weather app. It is free, it is accurate, easy to use to access your personalized forecast. You can find it now in your app store of choice. In Rock County, we're learning more about the homeless man found dead earlier this week in downtown Janesville. His family says there is much more to his story. Adam Duxter now from our Rock County Bureau. And Adam, this is not the first time something like this has happened. No, Eric and Charlotte, it's not. In fact, following the death of a homeless man in Janesville in July of 2018, a task force was created to help prevent something like this from happening again. Well, this past Monday, it did. From the front side of the Old Town Mall, you can see where businesses in Janesville's downtown call home. From the back side, you can see where Mike Terry called home. 
we here at Echo um, have been doing outreach since July, and we've been trying to connect with him, get him connected to services. Jessica Loker of the homeless prevention group Echo had seen Mike before. So had Janesville police, who say they offered him help once a month, every month for the past year. Terry never accepted. But sometimes there are some individuals who just don't want those services. Terry's family says while many would be quick to assume he was an addict, he wasn't. Rather, a war veteran struggling deeply with mental illness, spending most of his nights in this back alley. On Monday, Veterans Day, the former Marine was found dead. Tonight, his family says they're remembering him as kind and loving. Loker says while Janesville's doing as much as it can to help people like him, there's still more to be done. Medical assistance for the homeless is really a big thing. We're lacking a lot of those here in Rock County. In the past, Echo could provide vouchers to people like Mike that would let them spend a night in a motel. They no longer have the funding to do that. Tonight, Loker and Mike's family are grieving his death. A death Loker says should remind people they need to help. And Mike's family says during his time with the Marines, he spent time both in Okinawa and Hawaii. And they said he had a love for outer space, even bringing a telescope back from his time overseas. Now, they said they were told his cause of death at this point was a heart attack. Very sad story. Adam Duxer in our Rock County Bureau. Adam, thank you. Students in the Milwaukee suburb of Shorewood will be back in class tomorrow with police presence. Classes in the entire district were canceled today after investigators found a high school student with a hit list in his pocket and loaded magazine in his backpack. Superintendent Brian Davis says investigators found the firearm matching the magazine off campus. They confirmed it was never on or near school grounds and a thorough sweep of the high school found no weapons. As the superintendent and father of two daughters, in the district. I understand that this is a very difficult situation for all of us. We will continue to reflect and learn from this as we support each other as we're moving forward. Officials say the names on the hit list were not identified because of their race, gender, religion, sexual orientation, or any other identity. The superintendent thanked the student who reported it. A Madison woman faces charges for bringing a weapon into East High School. Police say 19-year-old Juanicia Thompson, who is not an East student, refused to exit the school yesterday afternoon after a disturbance with a student. Police say she spit on the school resource officer and had a stun gun and pepper spray in her pockets. Vice President Mike Pence planning another visit to Wisconsin. That's according to his office. He will visit a Marinette shipbuilder after canceling a trip there last month. He did make a stop in Kenosha County that day, speaking at shipping and packaging materials distributor Uline. Wisconsin, a key target for both the president and Democrats in 2020. President Trump won the state in 2016 by fewer than 23,000 votes. Madison Fire Department officials are disappointed that next year's city budget does not include funding for a ninth ambulance that they say is badly needed. Madeline O'Neill explains what the council's budget decision means for firefighters going forward. While a budget amendment passed late last night is giving more funding for police, the fire department will have to wait until next year's budget to try for a ninth ambulance, which they say not only adds more stress for firefighters, but adds risk for residents as well. This far southeast neighborhood is home to the new Station 14, but no ambulance. Engine 14 provides a paramedic who can respond to medical calls but can't transport patients to the hospital. And then we just need the ambulance to, to complete the process of getting you to the hospital. But if those things aren't falling into place perfectly, your life is at risk. Ambulances must come from elsewhere in the city, which has eight ambulances for more than 250,000 people. In a 45-day period from about mid-September to the end of October, we've uh, run out of ambulances seven times. The department was hoping for funding for a ninth ambulance, which could have come with three potential budget amendments. We're pretty disappointed. But city alders voted them down Tuesday night, some saying the positions the amendments would have had to eliminate in exchange for funding were too important, including a budgeted $200,000 independent police auditor. The council did approve an amendment adding three police officers to a budget that previously allocated funding for zero. 
I'm appreciative of the extra positions. Even if it's sort of a baby step this year, I think it's important. Important, Chief Fickwall says, for providing services and boosting police morale. Well, it's been a very challenging year because of some of our staffing needs. Wall says data shows the department is nearly 20 patrol officers short, even after moving 12 non-patrol officers, like neighborhood-based and gang officers, into patrol positions. There's just going to be... Uh, less service that we're able to provide to the public next year uh, and some of the engagement and outreach and problem solving efforts. Still, Wall says three more officers is a start. I'm hopeful that next year and in future years we'll continue to move forward. The council is meeting right now to discuss more amendments, including one that would eliminate the budgeted independent police auditor. Now, it's likely they'll vote to pass operating and capital budgets tonight as well, but if not, they can meet tomorrow too. Maddie, thank you. New at 6, Edgewood College will have its first dedicated home venue for soccer and lacrosse. The Eagles will practice and hold matches at Redden Soccer Park in Verona thanks to a partnership with the Madison Area Youth Soccer Association. A new field complete with spectator stands, a press box and scoreboard are expected to be ready by next fall. Next at 6, a Sun Prairie boy is inspiring others to do something good. How his passion for farming is making a difference for students in the area. And there's more local news ahead. The spire from Madison St. Raphael's Cathedral burned down 14 years ago. Now it's getting a new life. We'll show you tonight on News 3 Now at 10. Madison's Carbon 4 Brewing is debuting a new beer featuring popular quick trip items. That new beer, Glazer Bean, is a chocolate coffee stout brewed with Karuba coffee and a hint of Glazer donut flavor. The Quick Trip Carbon 4 partnership has been in the works now for the past six months. Brewmaster and co-owner Ryan Koga says it's not overly sweet as the ingredients may suggest. It just uh, is really balanced. Like a lot of the beer that we do here kind of have this outward idea, but it, it's not just throwing stuff into the brewing process just for the sake of novelty. Um, we might have a novel way of talking about it or having artwork or making it fun, but the beer itself really is like a, a really good beer. Glazer Bean is available exclusively at Quick Trips in Wisconsin right now. Ulbrich Gardens is preparing to show off its new learning center and greenhouses. The $12 million expansion project will allow the gardens to have a dedicated education space for the first time. That space has a lot of sustainable features as well, including a cistern to capture and reuse rainwater, solar panels that will reduce energy use by about 35 percent as well. The public is invited to tour the space as construction continues starting on Fridays and Saturdays this week through December 20th. 
In celebration of World Kindness Day, a Sun Prairie nonprofit is doing something good for local students. I didn't think we'd raise this much money. Sunshine Place will donate 1,700 kindness bags to students at four schools. Each bag includes breakfast, lunch, and snacks for the day. The initiative started three years ago when six-year-old Weston Hannon planted his first crops to feed others. Now nine years old, Weston helped assemble the kindness bags today. It's in honor of, of Weston Hannon who um, gave us a donation of $7,500 that he earned by farming the field behind his house and raised corn because he's wanted to be a farmer for as long as he can remember. And so he raised that corn and he sold it. Weston's passion has evolved into his family's nonprofit Harvest in the Gardens, which has helped distribute more than 5,000 kindness bags. Coming up in sports, an early update on tonight's Badger basketball game at the Kohl Center, and we'll meet two future members of the team who signed on the dotted line today. And after the snow stops falling tonight, a little sunshine should peek through tomorrow. Gary has your full forecast when we come back. Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti joins us now with our forecast. You know, the snow is starting to pick up in intensity south of Madison. It's kind of skipped over the city. It's very, very interesting. We've had uh, pretty persistent snow this morning north of Dane County. In fact, uh, Mary Lou up in uh, Marquette County, Westfield, picked up about three inches of snow. But there was a break for much of the day in Madison as a layer of dry air just kind of kept the snow from reaching the ground. And now it's starting to form again just to the south of us. There are some lighter snow showers to the west, and we can't rule out some light snow or flurries. But most of this should be done by uh, about midnight. You can see kind of the back edge of the snow here moving through northeastern Iowa and southeastern Minnesota, uh, just about to the La Crosse area. Visibilities show where the snow is falling the hardest. Uh, right now, uh, about three mile visibility in Monroe, and that's not uh, a very heavy snowfall. That would certainly would be considered light snow. Nine mile visibility with some light snow or flurries in Madison, and a scattering of three, four, five, six, seven mile visibilities. So 
some light snow and flurries across much of southern Wisconsin, but that should come to an end by about midnight. There could be up to two inches of uh, snow accumulation. The better, uh, most of that has already fallen in areas north of Madison. We could see a quick inch in those heavier bands of snow south of Madison toward the Illinois state line. Live view from the Edgewater Sky Cam in downtown Madison. The snow not falling very hard. You can see in the lights of the Capitol just a little bit of haziness. High temperature today so far 23 after starting out at 11. Our temperature stayed in the teens most of the night. Light snow falling at the airport. Winds out of the southeast or south west at five miles per hour. Our wind chill right now at 17 degrees. Three things you need to know. The snow will come to an end this evening and probably end around midnight. Then tomorrow we're back to partly sunny skies. That'll be the case for Friday as well with a slow moderation in temperatures. Be back close to freezing tomorrow and in the mid 30s for Friday. And it'll be cloudy and still cold this weekend. Temperatures again in the mid 30s, but there could be some light snow or maybe a mixture of rain and snow in on Sunday. Just a chance of that right now. If you look at temperatures and wind chills over the last 48 hours, you can see we've been way below normal. Our high temperature should be in the lower 40s. Low temperatures should be around 30 degrees and temperatures haven't been anywhere near that. The wind chills also have dipped below zero at times, but they are starting to improve. And current temperatures range from the teens in the uh, northern portion of Wisconsin to the low to mid 20s here. But notice out to the west, we're starting to see some 30s. That's about what we'll be looking at at this time tomorrow. That northwesterly wind flow now starting to shift a little farther toward the east. So the bulk of the cold air heading more toward New England has already gotten down almost to the Gulf Coast. Out to the west, the jet stream starting to head northward. That's a sign that the atmosphere is starting to rebound a little bit temperature wise. As we look at the overnight forecast, low of 19, light snow this evening, and then uh, just cloudy skies overnight. For tomorrow, we're back to partly sunny skies. Temperature is not quite as cold with a high of 31. On future track, those temperatures drop off into the upper teens as the snow comes to an end by about midnight. A little bit of clearing toward morning and that'll lead to partly sunny skies tomorrow. High temperatures in the upper 20s, lower 30s. Tomorrow night, clear skies early, then partly cloudy skies overnight with lows in the upper teens and then high temperatures in the mid 30s for Friday with sunny skies. Now, as we look at the seven to 10 day forecast, those temperatures in the mid 30s this weekend and then going up slightly as we head into the early part of next week, back to normal for Tuesday and Wednesday before a little cool off toward the end of next week. The future of Badger men's basketball gets a big boost from a set of twins in lacrosse today. The story is coming up in sports.
The Badger men's basketball team has one of those six o'clock starts tonight. Those are the kind you can't quite get off work early enough to make it on time to the Kohl Center. Well, the good news is there's still plenty of game left. Early on, it's 10-8 Cowboys. Kobe King isn't playing tonight. He injured his left leg in practice Monday. After tonight, the Badgers have their yearly showdown with Marquette. That'll be at the Kohl Center Sunday at noon. Marquette plays Purdue in Milwaukee tonight. In lacrosse today, the future of Badger basketball gets a little brighter. The official signing of twin brothers Jordan and Johnny Davis to national letters of intent to play basketball at the University of Wisconsin. They committed to Wisconsin back in June and today made it official. They're going to play basketball for the Badgers. I've dreamed about this moment ever since I saw it on ESPN, those top recruits in the country signing letter of intent. And to, just to see that day come true is truly a blessing. I wasn't going to go anywhere else without my brother. You know, he's my go-to man. He's been by my side my whole entire life. You know, just to be able to go to college with him and play the sport that we both love is just incredible. The Badger men's hockey team is back home this weekend. Wisconsin hosts Notre Dame at the Kohl Center Friday and Saturday nights. Of course, Notre Dame and Wisconsin will play a football game at Lambeau Field next October. Then in 2021 at Soldier Field in Chicago. This is the third season Notre Dame has been a member of the Big Ten for men's hockey. They're undefeated. They're ranked fourth in the country this week. Badgers head coach Tony Granato says Notre Dame has been a real plus for Big Ten hockey. They have the, you know, the prestige of being Notre Dame. Anything athletic-wise is is great for, for our, you know, for our team, for our sport, for our, I think our university to have Notre Dame on the schedule. So yes, I like their team a lot. I like what Jeff Jackson does there. Um, I like how they run their program, and uh, I think it's a positive thing to have in the Big Ten. Yes. The Packers get to take a good deep breath this week. They're in their bye week. Their next game is a week from Sunday at San Francisco. With six games left in the regular season, they hope a few more weeks after that in the playoffs. And with the grind so far and the grind that's ahead, running back Jamal Williams says he's going to enjoy this little break as much as he can. I'm about to unwind and just relax, watch me some movies, and just hang out with my daughter. That's what I'm really excited about, just hanging out with my family and just have, like, just a couple of days of don't have to come in here. <laughs> That's it. To get my mind right, you know, so because we know what's at stake and we know we have a long way to go and we plan on not finishing until February. Remember that four game suspension Ohio State defensive end Chase Young was going to get? Well, it's suddenly down to two. Young will sit out games against two lousy teams, Maryland and Rutgers, but will return for big games against Penn State and Michigan. Young admitted he accepted a loan from a family friend, but repaid it. Still, it's an extra benefit in the eyes of the NCAA. So he won't play against Rutgers, and they're favored by 52 points, but he will play against Penn State Michigan. So go figure. Guess they, uh, it's a miracle. Yeah. That'll drop it down to about 50 points, I'm well, sure. I, imagine, yeah. I think they'll be fine against those teams. Gary, final check. Some snow out there. Uh, looks like the heaviest snow now just south and east of Madison through Rock and Jefferson counties. Uh, Visibility is right now uh, a little bit lower toward the Illinois state line. Otherwise, not too bad. But again, with temperatures in the lower 20s, that's pretty cold. And uh, that's allowing some slick spots to develop where snow is sticking to the pavement. All right, Gary, thank you. Thanks for joining us for News 3 now at 6. Enjoy your evening, and we'll see you back here at 10. Thank you.